Today it is time to drive and take a detailed look at the VW ID bus, the electric microbus here on Autogefühl with Thomas for you. And you can see in the front this typical retro design with a big VW retro style logo. It does not have round headlamps. I would have wished for that. Maybe I can push them towards that if you like it. If you would prefer round headlamps, tell me in the comments. Here optional the matrix light, the IQ light. You can get this contrasting color here, white and blue, but we can also show you different colors or maybe you can go for a unique color look. So everything is possible from screaming out to a more subtle look actually. Today will be the driving part. This will be very crucial indeed. But here in the side profile, I can already tell you 4 meters 71 is the length. That's 185 inches, meaning a Kia EV6, for example, is almost the same length. So it does challenge on the length normal compact EVs, but has so much more space on the inside. There will be next to this short wheelbase version, a long wheelbase version. Then the wheelbase and the overall length is the same will be 25 centimeters or 10 inches longer that will be the standard version for the US market and it will also change that you can get more seats on the interior soon more to that here with tinted windows and a typical boxy style interesting new design elements right here definitely form follows function 18 to 21 inch wheels these here are 20 inch wheels will they still be comfortable while driving we'll find out today and in the rear, we can see the light strip goes all the way through. That looks cool, big retro logo. The top speed will be 145 kilometers an hour or 90 miles an hour. And the acceleration figure, 10.2 seconds here for the rear wheel drive version. There will be an all wheel drive version at a later stage that we can already promise you actually. But so far, rear wheel drive version is the entry and also makes a very narrow turning circle of around 11 meters. As for the range, well, that's the big question also for today. We'll later on test the energy consumption. It has a battery size of 77 kilowatt hours net. So we will also end up around 400 kilometers or 250 miles. If that's true, it's more or less. We'll find out later. Recharging. The flap is on the passenger side here. Really large. 11 kilowatt AC or 170 kilowatt DC charging peak and 5 to 80 percent state of charge in 30 minutes. That's the best for a Volkswagen electric vehicle so far. Of course, at the later stage, when we will take it on a longer tour on the German Autobahn, we will also test it for real for you. Next to the passenger versions, you can see it here with the windows. There's also the cargo version available here with the closed rear, no windows in the rear. And they both have the same short wheelbase. The later long wheelbase version will just be available for the passenger version. The cargo then for European markets and just for short wheelbase. Both have, by the way, multi-link rear axle. And as for the color variations, you maybe already know this one here with this yellow white combination, also with fitting interiors. We are going to show you that later. Yeah, you know, both on the exterior and in the interior, you can have it more subtle. Here, for example, just the plain black black combination looks also very interesting. And I would say like less clowns car alike. <laughs> Sorry about that. And here, this then a little bit more like a good mix, maybe with the contrast color, white and the dark blue. This is probably a combination I would maybe pick. So really cool, I think. Here once more. And then there are even more screaming out colors. Once again, for example, here with this green or turquoise combination. Which one would you pick? Tell me in the comments. This, of course, spices it up a little bit more. It's cool that they, these colors are available. It's, of course, more screaming out. And here, for example, also this orange combination. So would you pick a screaming out color for this vehicle or rather go in a more subtle way? And already an interior preview here you can see with the orange vehicle, you can also get the fitting seats also in this, you know, orange red alike tone and for the green vehicle also fitting seat colors you can have these then but you cannot mix like green exterior and yellow on the interior so some combinations are for good reason <laughs> forbidden so here then is this yellow interior with the yellow vehicle and I think when you go out for this screaming color when you go for this screaming out color then it also makes sense to pick the fitting seats, isn't it? And here my favorite, 
blue-white exterior color and then the blue-white seat. So this is in a way colorful, but also subtle enough. So I think this is a very elegant combination and my favorite for today, or the most subtle combination here with that black car on the ex uh, exterior. Then you also have this more gray or black, rather plain look here. But once again, I think a more elegant way is also very nice. So I think the yellow, green and orange is a little bit too playful for me. Maybe I'm talking too conservative in that re respect. Yeah. So which one would be your exterior India combination? Looking forward to your comment. And here, for example, if you want the yellow exterior, but just a white interior, this is also possible. Why not? Then you have, you can see here, also some yellow accentuations on the interior, but the seats are not yellow. And this is then here, the microfiber seat. So all have high recycling share, the microfiber at 70%, the fabric even higher. So really great that they use all the way animal free materials and even with a high or almost com sometimes complete recycling share. And also they can be recycled afterwards. So they also thought of that. Also coming up later, the camper box. Khaki, we know it already basically from the other models and high gloss paint on your leather, not that nice. Door closing sound. It's very so oh look at that or oh, here hear that ah oh, that's beautiful beautiful door closing sound love that interior then showing the different styles earlier this one my favorite here soft touch here hard back here but the white blue color styling that's a really really cool one here on the top dashboard by the way we have this wooden effect it's not a real wood material but it looks quite fancy and by that way they can also make it easier like this these curved areas that they can cover all of that steering wheel we know the classic styling this one and also here with uh, animal free wrap also durable they've been testing that and also the id4 id5 and id3 will get this steering wheel material from the next model year change so all the 2023 models will then already have that so the whole interior here is animal free and so will also be the rest of the ID models. This seat here is the one with the fabric cover and the blue white mix. Again, as I said earlier, there's also microfiber seat available. That one and only in unicolor with the bright microfiber. That looks also pretty cool and feels maybe a little bit better. Here, by the way, the second armrest. So the inner one is standard. The second on the outside one is an option and also a nice comfort feature. Getting inside is just funny, you know, because in this bus you climb a little bit in. I'll also soon measure, um, you know, how, it, how far it is from the ground. I uh, recently got that request. Thank you so much for that. And here... Da, 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 da. It's also always these jingles. It's usually when you leave the car, actually. Here, steering wheel is in and out, up and down, gladly. And yeah, you have this command driving position. It's just really cool, really comfortable. and. This seating position makes this vehicle so unique on the whole EV market. And headroom, 1 meter 89 or 6 or 2, no problem at all. There will, at the later stage, also be a panoramic roof available. That then will be a fixed one. So I recently met one of our fans in Iceland. He's a taxi driver and he told me that for his customers, they are always searching for cars which have from ground to the middle of the seat, like here, between 65 and 75 centimeters, because that's not too low, but also not too high, you know, when you have problems to get in the car. And here, it's more like 85, a little bit more like 34 inches, so 85 centimeters to the middle of the seat here without the bolster. So indeed, that position here, the seat to the ground is actually pretty high. That might be too high for those who don't want to climb in the vehicle and might be a problem for taxi drivers. However, you know, that makes it also so unique that you have this driving position. It's also the case in the rear, even higher, more like a 90 centimeters or 35 inches. And yeah, once again, I think it's the unique thing, the cool thing about this vehicle and you have massive amounts of space. Here, for example, also with the knee room, even if I am driving in the front position, there's so much knee room left and also a lot of headroom left. Once again, you cannot believe that this is the length of some other competitor EVs from the compact or mid-size segment, like, you know, like a Kia V6 or Hyundai Hyundai 5 and so on. A um, little bit longer than the ID4, of course, but you can move around here so freely. Five tall adults are absolutely no problem. 
And VW wants to bring people back from the SUV to the van segment. And I think this definitely works with this vehicle. And I think it's also the key to understanding this vehicle. It's more aiming at so far SUV customers or people who say like, hey, I want an EV, but something special and with more usability on the inside. You will be disappointed if you think, hey, I get like a classic multi-van or so on, like a T7 alternative electric. No, that's not, that's not about it. It's not that flexible and doesn't have that much space. It's more from that, you know, other approach as an alternative. Here, by the way, you can fold the seats from here and then you can see that the lower part moves down like this. And this is then one of the big surprises for this review. So far, there is this big step then in here, you know, like the, but then you can get inside the compact package, this one, and this is called the multi-flex board. And this makes an even transition then to the seats. Otherwise you have more height in the trunk, but then there's this hole basically. We'll take a look at that, a detailed look when we open the trunk very soon. As for the seating setup, this one here is the short wheelbase version. I like this five seater or later on also as a six seater. Then you have space here in the middle, go through. That's also fun for the kids. And then you have two more seats in the rear, also available with the short wheelbase version. In the long wheelbase version, which is also the standard version for the US and optional for Europe, there you can gig, go for, gig, you, there you can go for six seats or seven seats. Then you have the bench plus two seats in the rear. So these will be the seating options available for child seats. Isofix here in the rear two times and also in the front. No, no Isofix in the front. Yeah, so for Isofix, then you'll have to rely here on the back seats. And not to forget, you can also slide this bench forward. Then, of course, you have less legroom. You can see here this difference between back and front, two third, one third split. You would have more trunk length then, but of course, in this case, it makes only sense to slide it forward when you do not have this multi flex board then in the rear. Interior overview you have a mix of cool materials like this, you know, this fake wood, but it looks really amazing indeed and then more rugged materials like here, some more space. This is the normal glove box here and also dampened. That's nice. Vents right here. The screen, you start with 10 inch, optional this 12 inch. The passenger version can get this optional 12 inch. Cargo, just a, tw uh, the, just a 10 inch, a smaller one. Still the volume and the temperature sliders not backlit and the slider function is not that ideal, especially controlling it while driving and some hotkeys here, for example, for the driving modes. And um, when we're here at the infotainment system, this is the new software version 3.2. It has bug fixes, supposed to be more stable. You see it's also a little bit quicker. So better than before, definitely with this update, if you compare it to the previous versions in like ID4, ID5, still not the fastest one and not the best one. So um, not the biggest fan. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay integration looks like this. So again, it looks sta more stable than before. So but, yeah, but I, I won't be the biggest fan in this version. Also the whole setup with the black piano lacquer here and so on. More over to the left side, a steering wheel with hashtag capacitive BS buttons to control it while driving. Once again, quite complicated. The whole user face of the car is, I would say, acceptable when you get used to it, but not ideal. And these instruments are really small, but at least you have the speed in there. That's the main thing and also the range and you can control something in there like uh, here with that, with that view, but not too much. And to switch the gears, you have it here on the right side. It looks a little bit different than in the ID4, ID5 models. This then the reverse. And uh, when we put it here in reverse, we can also see the rear view camera. There's also a drone view from above possible. This fake drone view from above. And here resolution is okay. Could maybe be a little bit better. Moving towards, to the, moving towards the lower part. Here, these are two hotkeys then for the side sliding doors. You can get one or two, depending on what, what you pick. Cup holders, pretty stable actually, but you can also close that whole thing to have a more clean or tidy look. And then it's also very interesting, this middle console right here. Um, didn't know they offer ashtrays still in the cars. Hmm, interesting. 
some space here and then you can also put that whole thing out like here and then just you know remove that whole thing if you don't like it anymore and maybe throw it out not literally of course um, but you cannot slide it here like in the t7 um, it's just fixed then like this charging your smartphone to usb-c chargers here on the driver side and basically behind the steering wheel on the right side and then you can put the smartphone here in this hole and on the passenger side, there's a nice solution here, integrated in that door. That huge VW retro logo at the rear looks amazing, right? I just want to... that dot, ID dot bus, why is that? Couldn't I just get rid of the... Okay, later maybe. <laughs> so let's take a look here, passenger version. Soon also more to the cargo version from the back. Here, 1,120 liters up to 2,205 liters for the short wheelbase version. And now even more interesting, what's that? This is a so-called multi-flex board. Zoom more details to that. First of all, cargo space here, easy. And the length here, easy, two meters, even more. See here, even longer than two meters or 78 inches. Um, so, you know, there's easily then, yeah, it's like two meters 20 or, yeah, it's like 80 six inches so really long and flexible pretty cool and the interesting thing with this multi-flex board is really now it gets this even surface then when you fold the seats but then it reduces the height the overall height without the multi-flex board would be like here is one meters 12 or 44 inches with the multi-flex board then it is limited to about 88 centimeters or 35 inches. However, you can also deinstall it. I'm going to show you that very soon. First of all, you can fold it up like this, even with gas struts, that's beautiful. And then you have these, you know, I don't know, these storage items, either for charging cables, for example, you can put them out and then you can even slide something underneath it, but that's not too easy to do. But what's actually quite easy is to take this whole thing out and then you have these screws, but you can just control them with your bare hands. You don't need any tools for that. You would do it like this and then you can easily lift that here out and the same thing also for the next. And then you can put that whole thing out. So if you went for this one for the comfort package and need more height and once you want to get rid of that one, you can also take it out, you know, in a couple of minutes. That's no problem. I think it's a good idea that you have this possibility for an even loading cover and it depends on what you want to use it for them later on. A lot of easter eggs in the vehicle by the way, for example here also in the rear from the inside you have this microbus silhouette. Here the towing hook folds out like this. <laughs> here at this moment towing capacity is about one ton, so 1000 kilograms. At a later stage, when there will be the long wheelbase version and then there will also be an all-wheel drive version, towing capacity will also be possible at 1.8 tons with these versions. But it didn't hear from me that secret so far, so psst, don't tell anyone. And we have a special feature for you. This is the camping box. You cannot order it from works, but at your dealer then as accessory part. This is very interesting because here you can open that and then you have here, for example, either storage space or also cooking possibility would also fit in here and more storage here you can put some boxes in here and here for example also for water and the real trick is either it can be stored like this this is the bed and we can actually fold that out so for your camping trip you can actually put some stuff here in front of the box between the seats and the box you can stack it up all the way like this and here you have to push this one down it's a little bit tricky like this and then fold it up like this ah, here we go so and then you have here actually yeah basically a full-size bed for two and i would say let's try it out take a few shoes <laughs> so here we go let's see how comfortable it is and you know i'm 189 or six foot two and um I mean, of course, my mattress at home is more comfortable, but yeah, there's enough space to the ceiling and it works for two. Maybe like a, you need a nice pillow and something, but 
you can sleep in here and that would be then the true spirit of the bus, the old bus, the T1 transported here into the electric one. And here you can see the interior of the cargo version. In this case here, it has a bench that goes all the way through on the right side. So three seats then, good for work, you know, depending on the job. More rugged materials. And also the rest of the whole interior, the dashboard and so on. More simple, plain, cheaper, rugged materials. And also the 10 inch screen instead of the optional 12 inch screen. So for the cargo version, only the smaller 10 inch base screen is available. And here another perspective and the different seat setup. This is the cargo version and with the two single seats in the front. Maybe more comfortable if you just plan to go with two in the front. So you're flexible, you can either go for this one here, two single seats or then the other bench I've shown to you. And here, once again, you can see everything a little more simple. The whole dashboard here also on the left side, on the driver's side, just more on usability and not maybe that sensitive if you use it in a, let's say, more rugged way and so on. Now the back or the cargo area of the cargo version. And this is of course all the way open for all work or maybe also leisure use. You can see here a rugged floor and two meters or 78 inches is this ruler. And you see here it does exceed this length. So more than two meters or 78 inches. So very well usable on the side. You can, for example, install these, these bags, but also other, um, you know, other accessories are possible and also here you can see you can get two sliding doors and also this cover here it's also another option you can get to have everything protected that nothing you know falls to the front so you can fit a bicycle <laughs> in the back here for example that's also possible and the height here is at 1 meters 12 that's 44 inches and the passenger version would be go down like this for your feet you know when you're sitting there the cargo version has the even loading floor and that's why they have some space right here and this is then used for a hidden charging cable space and you might wonder does a bicycle fit in here well this is a you know pr pretty high one as for the handle handlebars here you can see in the height it does not fit i would need to put it you know like this then it would fit and lengthwise it's no problem because as I said, the cargo area is about two meters in length. This normal bike here is about 180. So lengthwise, it does fit no problem. Welcome to Thomas's performance driving lounge. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the most important thing about the VW ID bus, of course, the acceleration, launch control. No, it doesn't have a launch control, but 10.2 seconds is the official acceleration figure. And since we're here in this parking lot, this is the only chance we can test it here legally. A little bit of the acceleration. Let's go to the spot mode. Yes. And then let's launch it out here. Not to full speed, but something, you know, that we can see how much power this buzz has. Let's go. Plop 60 kilometers an hour. Yeah, it was really decent. And now look at that, the turning circle. Really? Oh my God, this is amazing. So just around 11 meters for such a vehicle, it feels like you would be turning a circle in, yeah, while the car is standing still. That is really impressive and makes it very versatile. This is the advantage of the rear wheel drive then you can turn in the front wheels you know a little bit further so good then good advantage of this platform then in this case that's pretty cool um, there will be all-wheel drive versions in the future this will then you know be even better in the acceleration figure but probably they won't have the same turning circle i i guess you know um, but still really impressive and for most use cases of course the rear wheel drive version will be enough and steering it's a nice direct input. It's a lot of fun to drive it. Low center of gravity because we have the batteries in the floor. Did I say anything to activate the voice? Or did I activate it here by instant? Sometimes, cancel. Cancel. Sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry myself. So the driving modes here, you feel also steering wheel. Sportman has a little bit more resistance. In the comfort mode, it's more free floating. And also the throttle input is changed in the eco mode, least throttle input. And as for recuperation, regenerative braking here in the D mode, it's rather rolling. And then when you put like this, B mode, 
there's the direct recuperation. Other than that, in the D mode, you have to use the brake pedal then for regenerative braking. It's not that it would have a big difference in efficiency or the consumption. It's more really what you prefer, rather one pedal driving feeling or rather this rolling feeling and then recuperation on demand. Um, yeah, it, it, it really depends on, you know, what, what you want to get used to. Is it a true one pedal driving feeling when you're in the B mode? Let's see, approaching a traffic light, now off the throttle. It's not the strongest recuperation, so I would not call it a complete one pedal driving feeling. Um, just a stronger recuperation mode. It might make sense because when you switch from the throttle pedal to the brake pedal, it always takes time. And in that time, there's already deceleration happening. The unique thing about this vehicle is really that super unique feeling. You know, you have this really wide space at the front windscreen. You have this traveling feeling. You have an upright seating position. And with the exterior size, told you earlier, with a, you know, like the Kia EV6 is comparable in exterior length. It's such a different driving feeling when you sit here upright, this typical bully, but not bully in a negative sense. In, in Germany we say B-U-L-L-I, not with Y, you know. So not like this, uh, you, you mob someone, but bully in a way of a small bus, that's what you say in Germany. This typical bully feeling you have here, um, that does work indeed. So yes, it is an electrified microbus and something of this you know, iconic uh, heritage you do feel actually. So that's actually the cool thing about this vehicle. It is such a unique proposal on the market and it is a lot of fun to drive it. And if you compare it to the former versions, the older versions and also to the T7, for example, this one indeed feels so much more agile and is so much more fun to drive. Let me demonstrate that here in this, um, in this roundabout. So with the bus, for example, you would say, like with the with T7 bus, you would say, hmm, yeah, okay, that's not fun to do it like. But here, it's really fun to go in a circle in the roundabout because you feel that the center of gravity is low, it's being kept, and you can easily exit then. It feels just agile, so it's the most fun to drive microbus so far, definitely. Let's run over these humps here. Let's see about the suspension. So far, I'm really happy with the suspension. Um, There's more like a bigger wave now here. Yeah. Now that small one. Yeah, it's very comfortable, you know. Upright seating position. Suspension is doing a good job. It's delivering basically both. So comfort and sportiness at the same time. I think they really found a good setup. And we have also the bigger wheels here mounted. and. Even these are actually no problem. So although we have these big wheels, we still have a very, very decent comfort. So from all the hardware effects, how it, you know, how it can drive, it's really, really cool. And of course, interesting will be a consumption test. Say so we will drive a little bit further and then we can tell you more about the energy consumption and the concise real world range. Well, what about some motorway driving? And here on the Öresund Bridge, very beautiful between Copenhagen and Malmö, so between Denmark and Sweden. It's a very beautiful bridge, very impressive indeed. And here we can also test what about the wind insulation. It's not too windy today, but here on the open sea, it's always somewhat windy. And noise insulation, I would say, is okay. We've had it better in other EVs, you have to think about it's quite high building um, car or van or bus. <laughs> so, and when we talk here to each other, for example, so I have to raise my voice a little bit. Again, it's not too bad, but definitely not that I would say it has a great wind insulation. So I would say it's, you know, on the like normal level, so to speak. And however, is it prone to like, you know, catching the wind or something so far doesn't feel like it it's very calm here i've also set the cruise control you can also have the travel assist that does keep the speed and also distance to the car in front of you and also has the active lane keeping assist and so here it is also being held in a rather smooth way here we approach the highest bridge pillars here for that and there's also a blind spot monitor 
that appears then in the side mirrors. It's a very nice integration, but most of the time people drive very civilized here, not like in Germany. <laughs> so when you're driving the allowed speed, then usually also you're not overtaken. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I can tell you that the blind spot motor is indeed very nice. Maybe uh, when we drive at the German Autobahn in a later video, then we can show you more about that. Interesting will of course be the final consumption, energy consumption. So we are driving the way to Malmo and back again to Kölnhorn. So Benle Hilsen to all the Danish, Swedish and uh, Norwegian viewers because yeah, uh, yeah, I can tell a little dense, but, well, not too much. I can speak a little bit of Danish, but just a little bit. I've been uh, here for studying. So, and um, so I want to drive back and forth because there might be wind from one direction and then it's only fair that we take both directions there and we have a little bit city driving and what I can already tell you so far, when you do city driving only, it is very efficient indeed and you can easily score more than 400 kilometers or 250 miles in low speed and city driving and it's basically as efficient as ID4, ID5 and so on. Here now at higher speeds, when the wind efficiency is really playing a role, then it will be worse than an ID4 or ID5. And what figures we score? Let's take a look at this final number. And here we go 21 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That's some 33 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And some city traffic in there. And most of this test was indeed driving around 110 kilometers an hour. So some 65 miles an hour on the motorway and also you know with open wind and so on back and forth that's indeed quite decent also for the long-term motorway consumption so that would in this case mean some 370 kilometers as a ev range on these higher speeds so some 230 miles and yeah once again at these speeds is actually quite decent will be a little bit less when you go at higher speeds but the top speed is at 145 kilometers an hour or 90 miles an hour anyway. But overall, I think this consumption result here for today actually quite decent. You can also compare other EVs. We have on our channel, we have a big EV comparison episode. And if you want to, more, want to see more color and trim, we also have a studio episode here of the ID Bus.